It's time. Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. I feel like this was shoved down my throat for a good two months. And you know what? I succumbed to the pressure of it. I've never read a hockey romance before. The girls seemed to like that, so I thought maybe I would too. Did I finish it fairly quickly? Yes. Did I love it? Maybe. I'm wearing my Team USA Olympic jacket. Not that I went to the Olympics or ever played for the Olympics, I don't know how I have this. Okay, so as always, the first part of this review is going to be spoiler free. So if you are in the middle of reading this book or you haven't yet and you want to know if it's a good recommendation, then you can watch the beginning of this video. If you've already read this book and you want to get into the nitty gritty, skip to this time frame um, and we'll get into the spoiler full version. <laughs> This book follows Anastasia, Anastasia, whatever. She is an ice skater in college. She does pairs. Nate Hawkins as well. He is a hockey player at the same college. Something happens where they have to be in close proximity, his team and her and her partner. And then it's just basically becomes a romance. Now, I heard someone say this is enemies to lovers and that would be a very, very aggressive stretch. Not enemies, I feel like enemies has a different flavor to it. This is more, I can't stand you, but then wait, I like you. I gave this book three and a half stars out of five. For me to rate a book five out of five stars, here's my rating situation so you know really how good this book really is in my eyes. A five out of five stars for me means I would reread it for sure. I would make a Pinterest board for the aesthetic of this book and I would maybe make a Spotify playlist. Who is calling me right now? Die maybe make a Spotify playlist uh, inspired by the feelings that I felt while reading this book. So that's my five out of five star rating. A very perfect world where I would not mind being in again. This book falls a little bit lower than a four star for me just because there were some parts in it and some aspects where I just felt it was a little bit rushed. It felt organic. It did feel organic, the connection, but there were a couple points where I was like, <laughs> How are we here already? How are we here? And that could be, that very well could be my commitment issues, you know, asking me that question. It did feel a little bit like we were jumping around, jumping forward, you know. It's a light read. I picked this book up after I finished Prior of the Orange Tree because I, I really needed a light read after that and it got the job done. It had me enthralled. I was picking it up every five seconds. I wanted to keep reading it. It had me entertained. It was fun. It was light. So in that respect, I, I enjoyed that part of this book. It has a lot of characters in it, but Hannah Grace did a great job at distinguishing each character individually. The differences between the characters were never blurred. So I knew exactly who this person was, I knew exactly who this person was, and she does a great job at making likable characters. This book also has a very good villain. It had me squeezing the book a little tighter, you know? It had me gripping the page a little bit harder. This book also has some depth to it that I wasn't expecting. It hits on some very real life points. These are the trigger warnings. I'm not gonna say them and I'll put them on the screen. Um, so if you're sensitive about any of this stuff, maybe don't, maybe don't. And I honestly was not expecting that type of depth from this book. Now, the spice. The spice level for me was about a three and a half out of five stars again. Um, and that rating very well could be swayed by the amount of spice that was in this book. Nothing crazy, but there was a, there's a kick to this book. Read this book if you want to be entertained. Read this book if you want to be looking forward to picking it up again. It was good banter, good flirting. Don't read this book if you want it to change your life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So let's get into the spoiler version of this review, which is what I'm excited about. I have a lot of notes. <laughs> and you know what? As I was reading this book, I always start a notes, um, like, situation. And this book, the first thought I had about this book was, wow. Into the spice right off the bat? Like, page 77? And we're in Nate's room? Weren't you just preaching about hating this guy? Like, Run it back. I'm confused. You know, page 77 and we're already riding this roller coaster. I feel like I wasn't tall enough yet. I feel like I wasn't tall enough to ride the ride yet. It did catch me off guard. I was a little taken aback, but I didn't complain. I am not complaining. I just 
usually I read books with more buildup, so I just was kind of like, oh. Okay. At that point, I almost was like, okay, well then, wait, what is this building up to? Exactly. It was a welcome change of pace. I'm not gonna complain. My favorite scene, my favorite scene, the club scene after they won their first hockey game and then the Uber. Going back to, I don't know if you watched the first part of this video, but going back to the part about the depth in this book surprising me, I really was pleasantly surprised because I wasn't expecting any serious conversations to come up. And the fact that family trauma, eating disorders, I've, I don't think I've read a book before where they touched on eating disorders, toxic friendships, like all that stuff. I was so happy to read about it because I feel like it's not really, I mean, especially the eating disorder situation, I feel like that's not really talked about or represented much in books. And in this book, it was done in such a healthy, like safe way. And I was pleasantly surprised. I really was. And I wasn't expecting this from Hannah Grace. It's a hockey romance and it's an easy one at that. I was like, okay. Okay, Hannah Grace. I also liked how throughout this book, you get the thought process of each character. I know when it was Nate's point of view, we didn't just hear the problem from his side. We heard and were able to read about his thought process about the problem and him processing through his emotions, which is interesting because usually when it's dual POV, you get like a lot less emotion and thought process from the guy because they portray these men as like brain dead I guess it was a nice change of pace to not only see Anastasia's side but his side too and see the thought process and honestly his thought process was so healthy and aware I felt like he deserved a little treat I really did um love Ryan love Nate love JJ Henry okay wait let's talk about Henry for a second because I feel like there's something going on there that we haven't touched on yet okay so Henry I love him but I feel like him and Anastasia were a little bit too close for comfort sometimes the stuff they said to each other I was like what like she went into detail talking to Nate about how she loved him so much and like she wants him and like if it wasn't Nate it'd be him like girl you have Nate though like why are you telling your guy about your backup plan that didn't sit right with me I felt almost like okay also I didn't like when they came back from Christmas break and she like had fallen in the pond and like almost died or whatever and like obviously Henry was triggered like yeah they're friends but then she went into his room and was like trying to tell him she's fine you know he's like painting or something and he was like I'm, I don't want to lose what we have. Like, I don't want to lose that. A friendship? I've never had this with anyone before. A friendship? What? Sus. To me, very sus. Let's talk about Aaron as a villain. Let's talk about that. I was confused about where his, where his anger, where his hatred came from a little bit. Up until like three fourths of the book, I really thought he was in love with Anastasia. And that's the reason he was like, you know, a demon? Was he not though? Like, was he not? I feel like the end of the book didn't really wrap up his character nicely. I feel, yeah, of course she dropped him and because he kissed her, oh my God. I almost gagged in real life. Like when he kissed her, I almost gagged in real life. Not only cause that's gross, like ew, it's him, but the disrespect on national television. Anyway, I feel like we didn't really get in a reason for why he's so messed up. Like, yeah, okay, you, your parents hate each other, but like, could you have not chosen to be a normal person, a sane person, a mildly kind person at least? So yeah, he was a good villain. He really was just because he was like sly about it. You know, he was like sneaky about it. That eating plan, girl, that's one thing I really liked about Nate. I really liked that he knew what he was doing when it came to nutrition and he made her a meal plan. Like that was really cute to me. And the fact that he went out of his way to not only make her a meal plan, but like plan it. So she was intaking enough protein and calories and like, that was cute. That was really cute. That got to me. Yeah. Anyway, I feel like we didn't really get a bow on top of Aaron's character at the end there. I liked Anastasia's character, I did. I liked her a lot. I feel like at the beginning, she was giving pick me a little bit, like a little bit, but she grew into her shoes. That falling through the ice thing, that caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that, like that was a good problem, you know? So happy we got that little epilogue situation where she was pregnant and she had won a gold medal at the Olympics and he had won the Stanley Cup, like, they fully deserve that. When authors do that, they include a little epilogue where they like 
show them in the future. I value that so much, especially with single novels where you really honestly maybe won't get any more from them. I honestly appreciate that so much. And so I was so thankful that she was able to compete in the Olympics and won. Like, that was the one thing when I knew she was going to drop Aaron. I supported her in dropping him. But that was the one thing that I was like, no, no, your dreams, your goals. One thing about me is I'm going to cheer for the girl's success beyond any relationship she could have in the book. So I was a little bit like, so I was like, oh my God, what if she doesn't amount to anything? Like, that's the one thing she wanted. But when it said she was a gold medalist i felt complete i feel like that's the reason that when i closed this book i felt so satisfied and i just was happy to just be like okay next book like that was such a fun ride next book this book almost literally so close almost made me spiral into a hockey romance uh black hole i didn't know the the that like fan base was so big like there's like a TikTok for it like hockey talk whatever what did I just say? No. It's like a huge fan base. I did almost spiral. I held myself back because I feel like I'm on a time crunch. Like I need to get my Goodreads goal. And, and I don't have time for delays for a book I gave 3.5 stars. You know what I'm saying? So let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. If you hated Aaron. If you liked Aaron. Who your favorite character was out of the boys. Um, what your thoughts were on Henry. I want to know that. So that's the end of this book review. Let me know what you rated this book out of 5 stars. So...